didn't take too good after I don't after I did the I put the first coat of bluing on there I barely had enough left in one of these little the perma blue in these little bottles three ounce bottles to do the first coat and then of course you got to oil it before you put it away or it will rust get regular rust on it since bluing is just a chemically induced rust to start with and uh, you can't get that thing once the oil soaks it into the metal you can't get the oil out and leave the bluing. I just strip the whole thing and start all over again. Which I, I kind of didn't mind because I had enough ME paper left from polishing the brass on the Ultra High Kentucky rifle back there, the big tall one in the back. And um, went. 400, 600, 800, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, and 2,500 grit wet and dry emery paper. So, um, I did, I used that and polished it the same way you saw in the powder, black powder shooter videos, re restoring the rifle when I was polishing the brass and all. You can see how shiny that is. Let me just let me buff it once. It still needs to, to use the cleaner degrease from it because you get that real fine gray powdery metal in the pores. And once once you get it cleaned up, then you should see less of those little mic record micro grooves going around it from uh, too high of a tool speed. And the cut being a hair too deep besides. The finishing cut should never be more than about 25 ten thousandths of an inch or point oh oh is a month sorry point zero zero two five and the speed on the tool speed should be real slow. Take your freaking time. That's even more critical than the finishing cut on a rotor or a brake drum with those old machines we used to use. But anyway, there's the top of the barrel with the sight, the threaded sight holes and all that stuff. Looks pretty good. You try the super blue today, but I've got a uh, I can't on my hand. I got a got my wife's hair dryer here. The Del Sassoon ionizer. Don't want to ionize it. I think I just want to heat it up. I forgot until I was sitting the, the, from all the, the first coat of bluing and the, then sitting there polishing and everything. I was going up to the 2000 grit when it finally hit me how I got the bluing to not look kind of like a spotted bass or something. Cold metal. Hot bluing is 140 degrees. And you got your little little hangers with dollar eyes, whatever, that you suspend it in, a, in the tank. In the bluing tank, you let sit there for X amount of time to get a certain amount of bluing where it looks good to you, but you polish the metal first. Okay, so I did like I showed you, and um, then I have to use the hair dryer to heat the metal up. Now, I'll degrease it and everything first, and then use the hair dryer to get, to get it warm or at least take the chill off it. I, was, I had to take my, my hoodie off here. I was just about to, about to break a sweat even here in the end of November. Oh, I can't get that armor. In the middle of the day, this room gets. Oh, see to me? You see what purple tunnel does? I can't use my fingers on my left hand to. I need somebody else to put that on my left hand. I can't scoop the. Oh, got it. That's very hard. To, you can't scoot your hand around. I, I, I can't get it on my hand. I'm really not kidding. I can't get that stupid thumb. I can't pick my thumb over there. It gets raveled up all from here all the way up to about there. That's really hard. And you got carpal, carpal tunnel and rheumatoid arthritis besides. See 
these surgeons do. The tips of the gloves are a little bit long, even if you buy them close to your size. That's why you see surgeons doing that. You gotta scoot it down so you can use your fingertips. And yeah, I've got A's in the living sciences. Even in the lab, the teacher had me as a lab assistant because I, I, I was a straight A student. I've been hunting and fishing for years before I got into junior high school and uh, living sciences and all of that. So I was dissecting the fetal pigs and the fish and whatever it was easy for me because I'd done all that already. And, I had, and, and he had me help teach the other students that all invertebrates are inherently similar. They're just compressed or stretched out more when it comes to the internal organs and the torso. Depends on the shape of the torso. And that's about it. Otherwise, we all got pretty much the same stuff in here. That's our little science lesson for today. Now, I've also got a rinse bucket over here, five quart ice cream pail, and a pail of fresh water over here. And the hefty three ounce bathroom cups to put the chemicals in and pour rinse water and stuff. Have to get some more of them pretty soon. They'll get below. Oh, full of crap! It looks like everything is piled up, piled up and hanging around with everything else. Let me try to grab one thing, you gotta knock them all down. Darth's hair drawer. Well, then, Kenny, here's your pellets all wrapped up, padded, and ready to go. Just gotta wait for a tiring payday to be able to send them out. Oh, stubborn piece of junk slip. <coughs> okay, anyway. I was about to break a sweat in here. This dog got on metal. Oh, that's cold. I don't know how it is. Yeah. It tripped the breaker switch on the thing here. I'll have to do it cold. There's no other way. That's too much power on the thing. Well, I got, yeah, I got one power strip plugged into another power strip as a redundant backup kind of, you know. Well, I didn't want to work on the table. I just didn't. It's just too much damn labor to drag all that, drag four or five armloads of stuff out of this room. It's hard enough to set it up in here. I'll just forget the computer. I'll turn it back on later. Okay, well, that's it. Wow. <laughs> that, that, uh. Oh, I was going to forget something. Well, if it's not open yet, why is the zipper closed? Okay, cotton balls. Squeeze all there out, sucks it back in anyway. Okay, anyhow. so I'm not forgetting to. But I think it did say on here somewhere to, to shake one of these up so I just do it all on Okay, that's the cleaner degreaser, the pink stuff. Need a, need a new 
gas valve seal on the the, the, the strut thing on the chair, the upper seal broken like a, it's like the struts on your car leaks oil. Yeah. Okay. get the dirt out of the pores of metal. I've wiped this thing down a couple times already, but not with the uh, cleaner degreaser. And notice if you forget to use the cleaner degreaser, the booing doesn't go on real, real good. It doesn't seem to want to saturate as easy. In the metal, I mean. This is looking a hair shinier though. Put that back in there and sit it over there. Oh! Oh! Turn right side up, cunts on you! Spell on the carpet, dummy. Wash my gloves off too, gotta make sure I wash the fingers of the gloves off. Okay. Oh, and a Q-tip fits this this 177 cal barrel real good on the inside. That was interesting. So I can basically stick a Q-tip down there, take the spear tip jag off that dewy cleaning rod, and just ram her on through. In theory. Yeah, I needed one for after this one to dry with, and I didn't think to grab one. This one here, I can mop up chemicals and wipe my gloves on. That's about it. Just okay. And you got all these little little holes and everything around there. You got to make sure you dry those out too. Oh, that took the bluing out that little dimple right there where the barrel band goes real nice too. So that was cool. Trying to make sure. Take your time, take your time, take your time. If you're like me and don't have any patience, this is a wonderful way to learn patience. Because the more patience you learn, the better the, better the job comes out. And you can see there, she's looking nice and shiny which is what we want. That's not bad being polished entirely by hand when uh, you, don't, uh, you, don't have, you don't have a lathe and different grades of memory tape and you know the way you would usually polish a barrel properly. The way that old man did up by Pat and Grassy's bar <laughs> on Center Ridge and Ridge Road. One little side street next to the bar he lived a good ways down on the left. He was a pattern maker for Ford that converted his garage into a gunsmithing shop and boy was that guy good. He converted converted a Japanese 7.7 millimeter Akasara pop brought back from the Philippines 
into a 757 Remington Super Express and sold them a Walnut Monte Carlo stock back then in the 70s, late 70s, early 80s for like 25 bucks. I mean, it hadn't even been finished yet. It had, it had the black and white capping on it and, you know, classic stuff like that. Okay. Set that aside. Oh, I can't get that in front of me. Let's get this, this water off her. If you don't like what TV tables, you can't wipe real fast or real hard and knock it over. Okay, I'll just leave that in my hoodie there. Dang, that looks pretty. 